a week, little dad, you can hardly hear it. And you had one in the Church of Ireland, it was a little bit louder. And one in the Catholic Church, it was really loud. You could hear it from miles away.
Well, for twenty frantic throughout this year's I worked in Dublin town. Reporting for newspapers, I was busy writing down the words of politicians in the endless quest for truth. Twas such a wasted exercise, I squandered all my youth. For now, my misfortune, as I'll explain to you, I find myself down talking like politicians do. So if someone should ask me, do I take sugar in me tay? I grasp them for me by the hand, and this is what I say. Well, I'm very glad you asked me that. For at this point in time, in the circumstances that prevail, there is in the pipeline infrastructure implications interface with lines of thought which lead to grassroots viabilities. At this point, I'd rather not enunciate in ambiguities, but rather seek to find negotiated compromises which are the bottom line for full and frank discussions which serve to integrate, which lead to fundamental principles for which we all relate, not in doctrine or philosophy which any fool can see, and an excusable hypothesis confronting you and me. Now in the interest of the common good, now you need never fear, for I have the matter well in hand, and I'm glad I made things clear. Now as you can imagine, this has greatly shaped my life. An example was on the day on which I met my wife. All went well until the priest. He asked me with a smile, do you take this woman for your wife? And swiftly I replied, well, I'm very glad you asked me that, for at this point in time, in the circumstances that prevail, there is in the pipeline, infrastructure implications interface with lines of thought, which lead to grassroots viabilities. At this point, I'd rather not enunciate in ambiguities, but rather seek to find the negotiated compromises, which are the bottom line for full and discussions which serve to integrate, which lead the fundamental principles for which we all relate, not in doctrine or philosophy, which any fool can see, and in excusable hypothesis confronting you and me. Now in the interest of the common good, now you need never fear, for I have the matter well in hand, and I'm glad I made things clear. Now I'm lying on my deathbed, and I'm faced with mortal dread, for shortly I know I'll certainly be dead. And when St. Peter he asked me, do you want to come on in? I know I'll face damnation, for I'll surely say to him, well, I'm very glad you asked me that. For at this point in time, in the circumstances that prevail, there is in the pipeline infrastructure implications interface with lines of thought which lead to grassroots viabilities. At this point, I'd rather not enunciate in ambiguities, but rather seek to find negotiated compromises which are the bottom line for full and frank discussions which serve to integrate, which lead to fundamental principles for which we all relate, not in doctrine or philosophy which any fool can see, and in excusable hypothesis hypothesis confronting you and me. Now in the interest of the common good, now you need never fear, for I have the matter well in hand, and I've done the making clear. I wasn't going to do this one, but I am now. Um, uh, this is a, a song, a, a very deep meaning song about my holidays. When we got our redundancy, myself and the boys went on the spree. A brand new passport in me, and as we took off for the Netherlands, myself and Jerry McGuire and Scush, a sheep ball we were all half cut. We opened up to Judy Free, the red lemonade and the brandy, and jumped on board the tram. For oh, the weekend we spent in Amsterdam. Our first stop was the coffee shop. In we went and we all start up. As she's from Pakistan, we're up on the pile. And the limping on, all the boys were rolling joints. They forgot to drink their pints. The water pipe came bubbling around. We took one pull, hit the ground. That's where the myth you can. Oh, the weekend that we spent in Amsterdam. Then we went to the Blarney Stone. Paddy had the all Ireland by the land. Did he can eat cats? The boys from Tick, Tato's and Major. Over the Mulligans for the night. The bar was living in the band of choice. The bird, the bono and the old horse in Jerry Grab. The white and gave us a bit of a song. Oh, the weekend that we spent in Amsterdam. Then it went straight. Why we're here, we'll go and have a look at all the kinky gear. I said that quiet prayer would bump it, and he went from Comer when the dildos blow up dolls, stuff on tools and hairy balls, five breakers, whips and chains and zips, a fanny ticklers, get between us and the harm. Oh, the weekend that we spent in Amsterdam. Then we went 
for a neat nice walk All the rhymes heard on the stop Day bars for the laws Mobs in the windows with no claws When Chignar he danced all night With the South American transvestite Everything was going grand And Jerry tried to drop the hand Hang them all again But the weekend that we spent in Amsterdam The bouncer she was by foot ten Alone and heavyweight champion Hit Nick Welch an awful box The boys ran the book and wrecked the shop You could hear the spot cars getting near But Jesus, boys were out of here Jim Marr pulled up his tights And we disappeared into the night But together now one we won For the weekend that we spent in Amsterdam Queen Beatrice, she rides her bike Rembrandt is hanging down at the right I explain again, banged off the girdle and ganji Next morning we were all half-packed We dined into the Kaiser snack The fish was out and horses down And stuck us on a plane to Dublin Back to Kikani again For the weekend we spent in Amsterdam <laughs>
because a lot of people were against the building of the bridge in town and I was one of them. So we protested last year and they came up with this song and uh, a lot of people on the, got a lot of visits on YouTube from it. A lot of people that are from Kilkenny, who particularly one per person lives in Luxembourg from Kilkenny. He gave me great praise about the song, so we do that starting off.
through the oral tradition, stories and music. And people are fascinated that I didn't hear it on iTunes or something fascinating. Not even television. <laughs> even pre-radio in lots of houses of our country. I remember hearing the first live music on the open air dance board and also ran by his visiting at Christmas time, you all know about that. And when I relate that now, people think I'm talking about centuries back, way back, but no. And uh, then you hear things and when people come back, they have lots of things to tell. And one family of relations with mine came back, a bit distant, and it's just well assisted because some of them didn't like the story when it got round. They returned to our country and brought back a few artifacts of interest to the house when they were coming. It was kind of like a house lot. Uh, they were bringing it back for others to inherit in a sense like. And one of the big talking points in the house, and people would be calling in forever looking at it, and that was the American fridge. The big American fridge, big lever handle on it. I've never seen it like it here. This big refrigerator. And neighbours would be calling in. It was a great source of uh, conversation in the house, the visitors coming, but it was also a source of bone of contention in the house. And in fact, it did woeful damage to the relationship of the two in the house. Because being a pre-owned model, the bottom lug on the hinge was a bit worn, and every so often the fridge drawer would hop out and there'd be stuff going off inside and free, and going, you know, out of date or whatever you call it now, and they'd be around the house as to when your man would get back to fix it. And there's always a couple of more there for Australia, ever me or father. And one day, the woman in the house just mentioned it, as he was getting ready to bring on the 14 team down for training. <laughs> the wrong day to mention that. And he went out and discussed. He said, this is not the game, there's a big game coming up. How could you mention such a thing? Anyway, he said, you don't see Mr. Bosch written across my forehead to him. Of course, that was his having comment. She knew then there was going to be nothing done. That worked out anyway. A couple of weeks later, there was another little task they had started. And then when she got thinking of one thing in the house, she thought of a few other things. And another thing they had started in the fall of the previous year was that of a cobblestone path coming from the back door around the house, around towards the front door. But they were only halfway around with it, and the job was, once again, Mother Dirt, throughout the area, cover it, error on Mayor Father, put on the long finger. And lo and behold, what day did the woman of the house happen to be inspired about running the day the final was on? And he was there in the morning, trap, hurls the whole lot in. Oh, he said, today is not to be the day to be mentioning that it is cobblestone work. He said, she will get back to it. Anyway, he said, you don't see Mr. Roadstone written across my forehead, do you? And off he go. Well, he went off anyway. Things went on fairly well in the game. Things seemed to go fairly well. As he left, she thought to herself, maybe I'll go down as far as the old co-op store. Mick mentioned one down the country. They were all over the place at the time. I'll get another wheelbarrow of sand and a bit of fine cement. And I commence doing a bit of it myself. But in the afternoon, I'm not into the under 14 hurling. So down she went, took the old, the common wheelbarrow, heavy wheelbarrow at the time, down to the cream with it, got it loaded with the gravel, the fine foot sand, and a little bag of cement, and wheeled up along and lowered the left hand, that's the only way you can indicate on a wheelbarrow, you know that, <laughs> and pulled in, down the little driveway to their own place, and she heaved up the sand and got working. And at the same time, there was a fellow passing down on a bicycle, wearing a cap like Mike was wearing earlier on there, one of those uh, baker's caps, and a cut a work about this day. And he said, uh, can I give you a hand there, madam? He said, or whatever. He said, I'm uh, at a loose end. She said, if you're available, I could do with help. So he tucked into the work with her. And they were getting on very well. Much better than ourselves and the husband ever got on putting down the cobblestones. Because I had about a yard and a half that in square measure out covered. And they were coming near the corner of the house about four o'clock in the evening. She said, you know, she said, I think it's time to have a quick mug of tea. Afternoon tea, they call it now. Mug of tea time, that time. Slice of brown bread and jam was in the house. And he agreed. They sat in. Uh, and discussed a bit about the weather and the youngsters playing. And then he, he took a, 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 a view across. He could see the old logo on the, the bottom of the fridge door hanging down on the ground. How did he say, I see the fridge door the hot's hopped out? He said, I, I, I'll take a look at that later on. He said, they said before we finish. Now, that's not a contract. You know that taking a look at a job is just. <laughs> but it is to the staff. Would you show I will? He said, I'll take a look at it before I go or something. Anyway, make a long story short, we'll be here all night. <clears throat> Later on that night, we'll take up the story. The game is over, the aftermatch analysis around the pitch has taken place, and it became very thirsty. It must have been a fine evening. They all had to go back down to the local pub to have a few pints to wash down the dust that they took in when they were doing the aftermatch analysis on the side of the pitch. And it was all hours that night when he arrived and back, whistling and chirping and delighted with himself after the wind, moonlight, night at this stage, moonlight alone. And as he approached the place, he couldn't get over all the digging back was done, the amount of 
square measure of cobblestone. Well, my God, is it? Somebody is being busy around here. And he was walking out, keeping his head up in case he spilled any of what he left to drinking already. <laughs> Somebody is being busy around here. And then he rides into the kitchen and looks at him. My God, he said, I see the fridge door is put back. You must have got help, he said, surely. Well, she said, an honest question begs an honest answer. I did get help, she said. You were no sooner gone. I was back to the sand, commencing the job myself, and his neighbour was passing down the road on a bicycle. He asked me if I wanted help, and I said I would. But we see it. And he tucked into the work. My God, she said, I'm sure that cost us a queer penny. Not at all, but if I support for earlier on. But anyway, <laughs> well, she said he was a gentleman. He didn't cost me a penny. I asked him when we were finished, what did you want for the afternoon? Why? He said, I made it up, I enjoyed the work. He said, in fact, he said, uh, it was good for me. I love that brown bread, he said. If you want nothing from me, he said, if you're baking a cake with that brown bread again, I, I'd appreciate it. Fine cake, that brown bread, it was nice. If it's the wrong baking, or, or fail that, he said, if you want to go up, he said, we go up on the, the little veranda they had over the, you know, the porches and the doors and all, but the window used to open up, there's a veranda, a nice evening. If you like, I think we'll go up and sit on the veranda and have a chat for an hour or two. What's the husband? Oh, stairs out on the veranda, is it? Well, tell me, he said, which did you do? Well, she said, you don't see Pat the Baker written on my head, do you?
years. Pat Murray used to play with me in Clears, saved for about 20 years and he passed away suddenly. And I miss him a lot from playing across the road and for three other people. Um, Mick Watson used to play in Bunnerstick and I mentioned him in the song. A very good friend of mine, Kenny Cummins, who I worked with in Dublin for a long number of years, who's a great banjo player. And finally, another great friend of mine, Johnny Bourne, a Bunny Gall musician, who I used to play with. And I lived up in Dublin, a violin player. I got lots of tunes off of him. So, it's a song especially for them, wherever they may be tonight.
to the music fast and sweet. But the boys and girls of the comrades, they never lost their sheep. So that tied in for inside, they have to make on my vision of beauty, love, and truth. O stony grey side of Monaghan, you burgled my bank of youth. Mother Hinchia, 
Dramaril Manchenko, wherever I turn I see, in the stony grey Isle of Monaghan, dead loves that were born for me. But later on in his life, Patrick Kavanagh was to say, there was no dead loves. There was just the beauty of every stick and stone that surrounded his watery farm. But there was also the beauty of those young girls that came out of that college in Dublin. One in particular, Hilda Moriarty. He pursued her in the coffee shops of Grafton Street, but she rejected him. And he went away and he wrote a poem called Dark Haired Miriam Ran Away that was later to become On Raglan Road. On Raglan Road, on Autumn Day, I saw her first and you.
playing through railings with little children whose children have long since died. Oh, he was a nice man, I'll tell you. He was a nice man. Fall down the right door. was written about all the other creatures that inhabit this earth with us, we may have some chance of survival for our grandchildren and their grandchildren and their grandchildren. The Keeper, St. Bimbi, please. First we saw the sun, Lord lay down to rest a while, so pleased with what he'd done. Of all the creatures he had made, he loved the man the best. So he placed into his hands the fate of all the rest. And all these things I give to you, to keep and to protect. For the greatest of the fixed firm were to the tiniest. see the world of all the other creatures that share the lovely earth. One by one he hunted them for food and sport and greed. One by one they disappeared, each species and each breed. And all these things I give to you to keep and to protect from the greatest of the big sperm where to the tiny. After many years had passed, Lord came back to see man and all the others. He left so fine with me. We're all my silver streams, for a start and green. There was only dust and desert wherever man had been. And all these things I need to keep and to protect. From the greatest of the experiment to the tiniest. Before your ships had sailed, the lion and the tiger and the elephant so tall, I left you as their keeper, do you not to be gone? All these things I give to you, keep you to protect, from the rain to stop the big sperm way to the tiniest. To rule with love and kindness, how the weak, the wild, the strong, treat my creatures gently, only you know. And treat my creatures gently, only you know right from wrong. I'd like to congratulate me on his CD and thank you for inviting me here today. Thank you.
from County Walford. And everybody here tonight to come in to support us. Thank you very much, okay? <laughs>